Hello and welcome to our viewers on Crux Investor. I'm here with Andre Liebenberg. He's the CEO of Yellow Cake. They're a, what would you describe it as? I think in its simplest form, it's a physically backed ETF, but in a corporate vehicle. Physically backed ETF, that's, that's a great, great way to put it. We're gonna, so we're gonna talk to Andre about a whole bunch of stuff. You can look in the description below uh, for those topics and click on the relevant timestamp and that'll take you to that part of the video. And if you can also click on the corner to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plus, if you want to see more videos like this, or Andre when he next appears on the show, uh, click the notification bell. Andre, hello, how are you? Very good, thank you. So you're here at the WNA. Yep. Obviously, you're in uranium. I'm in Nuclear uranium. world. We've got the whole nuclear industry in, in London this Have you week. Have been wall-to-wall -wall meetings? Uh, pretty much. Uh, yeah. It's a good opportunity because we've got a lot of investors in, in town who, right. who sort of interest in the space. Um, and you know, I haven't been directly involved in the WNA activities, but but around the fringe, uh, yeah. seeing investors uh, doing things like this, uh, speaking in a, a, at a presentation forum tonight. So mm -hmm. just trying to get more interested in, in our stock on the back of uh, interest in uranium this well, week. Well, we've been wanting to see you for a while because you know it's you know what you do is interesting to me. You know, we invest in equities. I have a particular love for royalty companies, and you're. A Slightly different from that, uh, and I want to understand the differences and nuanced differences between what you've got for, for investors. So, let's start off with a description of what is it that you do. Okay, so w w what is yellow cake? I mean, if you look at our balance sheet, we've got 9.6 million pounds of uranium, mm -hmm. it's physical uranium mm -hmm. sitting in barrels in, in a processing facility in Canada, and we've got so I see, so just uh, before we go, you physically take. Yep. control of that and so store it yourselves. Well, it's not a virtual. It, no, no, it, it, it's real physical barrels, but, right. we, but we, you know, it's not something you can store in your backyard because no. it's, it's highly regulated. <laughs> there, there are three processing or storage facilities in the West, uh, regulated facilities in the mm -hmm. West. There's one in Canada, yeah. one in France, and one in the US. Yeah. And uh, we uh, uh, have a storage agreement with Cameco, mm -hmm. the world's second largest uh, uranium producer. And we store our product at their facility uh, just out of the side of Toronto. So, okay. yeah. Okay, so I, I'm always fascinated by the way that the management team think about this. This is a relatively new operation. How long have you been going? So we came to market in July last year, yeah. but, but I got involved in you know, the, the, the setup process probably early 2017. Okay. Uh, there was a, someone who I've known for a long time, Peter Backus. He was at Citibank, yeah. Morgan yeah. Stanley. Uh, you know, he, it was sort of his baby, and, and he asked me to come on board early 2017. Uh, and uh, you know, the success rate on these things are from start to finish is, is not great, but we were fortunate. Yeah. We went all the way from from you know zero to to successful IPO in July last year. So we've been on the market since the fifth of July last year. So just over a year. So what's your market cap? Uh, it's about two hundred and forty million dollars ish. Right. So okay. So let's let's come back to the thinking. So eighteen months ago or two years ago, mm -hmm. when the idea was. You know, being being moulded, uh, uranium was a difficult space, right? It was a difficult space, and it and it has been for 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 quite some time. Continues to be, yeah. Uh, there was the, there is another vehicle that 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 does exactly what we do. Yeah. Uh, traded on 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 the Toronto Stock Exchange, yeah. Uranium Participation Corporation. Yeah. So, you know, we, we we had a look at their architecture and and you know, thought there'd be a good opportunity to do something like that in London. Mm. But it was, you know, with these sorts of things, uh, it, it's around timing, good fortune and, 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 and relationships. Mm. So Peter, through his network, had a relationship back to Kaz Adamprom. You know, at that stage, they were thinking about becoming more commercial. It was a couple of years ago. So mm. they, you know, obviously had eyes on an IPO down the track. So it, it worked out for us that, that uh, this would provide an avenue, uh, you know, another customer for them because okay. we would essentially sequester the, the material, stick it in the warehouse, and, yeah. and, and not, you know, not put it back on the market. So it's a, it's a kind of copycat thing. You look at it a, is a corporation which worked, and you think we can do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we didn't have to redesign the architecture. There, there, there was a vehicle there that had a ten-year track record, mm. uh, and and as you say, it worked. Okay, so tell us about how this works, because there's a few things that I'd, I'd need to believe that you could do. One, you've got relationships to be able to access product and buy, yeah. buy product. It's a very regulated industry, mm -hmm. so it's a very sort of technical thing that you need to be able to transact on. Then you know, things like you then need to store 
physical yep. product, yep. you need contracts in place for that, and you need to run the company in terms of pr promoting it. It's a, it's a you know reasonable sized company yep. with aim, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, maybe if I go back to my you know first comment, if you look at our balance sheet, what was yeah. in the balance sheet? Nine point yeah. six million pounds of physical uranium, yeah. about eight million dollars of cash. That's it. Yeah. We've got three employees, uh, an non-executive board. Yeah. We don't have a London office. It's, yeah. it's really, really simple and skinny. And that's the whole purpose: is is to, you know, reduce the leakage as much as much as possible. But, you, but you're, buy, you're, buy, you're buying physical product, so mm. there's a value to that on the balance sheet, yeah. and it's sitting somewhere. So you've got control of it. You've got a bit of cash. Presumably, well, very low GNA, very low costs yep, yeah. uh, in this. You know, to grow, you need to go and raise more capital. Absolutely. And you say to people, we're going to buy it at one price, we're going to hold it for a while, it's going to be worth a lot more. You've doubled your money, or whatever uh, you're saying to them. Yeah, I, I guess it's, 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 it simple it's, e it's even simpler than that, because okay. what I'm saying to you is, you know, as an individual or, or you know, as an institution, it's difficult to invest in physical uranium. What we're creating is a share price that looks like the uranium price. Yeah. And, and we're going to buy and hold the uranium, and you can buy and sell our shares. If yeah. you think the, you know, you've, you've made a 10% return and you want to get out, you sell the shares. If you want to you double your money, you, yeah. you know. So we're not making those trading decisions. The only thing I need to think about is, are we trading at a premium or a discount to net yeah. asset value? Yeah. If we're at a premium, we should issue stock, buy more uranium, yeah. um, you know, increase the pounds per, per, per share. But uh, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking any trading positions because that is the, um, you know, that's what we've created for the shareholder. So, so it sits somewhere between, you know, obviously equities, people you know, buy into <coughs> equities because they're, they're, they see, yeah. the, see the lights, it's a three bagger, five mm -hmm. bagger, 10 bagger, equities can, can go far. Um, royalties, it's much, much safer because the, 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 the types of returns are a lot smaller, but mm -hmm. it's consistent, <coughs> regular cash flow, mm -hmm. dividend paying usually, because again, it's a very yeah, low yeah. cost operation. Where do, you, where do you sit? So we would be much more of a capital player than an income player. I mean, a royalty, yeah. you know, you, you yeah, get either sure. physical or, or income. Yeah. You know, we, we don't have any income. So the cash we hold really is to, to cover G&A. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's a capital play. So, right. you know, what's going to happen to uranium? I think if you look at it, you know, stepping back really, really simply, mm. uh, I've spent the last 20, 25 years in, in the commodity space. I was mm -hmm. at BHP Billiton for a very long time and then private equity in, in commodities, but always in, in, in resources. Mm -hmm. uh, commodities are cyclical, you know, they go up and down. Sure. So, you know, what we had to convince ourselves that we were closer to the bottom of the cycle than, than the top of the cycle. So that, you know, it, it, it's, it's of course. Th that was the thesis that, that uranium had been on its back for a long time. Mm -hmm. There were a number of factors which were coming into play which suggested that in time, you know, it couldn't stay a, a, at the price that it was. Mm -hmm. It had to rebound because you're going to need new investment into mm -hmm. the industry. Resources are finite life assets. They mm -hmm. decline over time. They need to be replaced. Uh, there's the whole uh, issue around contracting. Historically, mm -hmm. uh, utilities had price protection from, from yep. you know, fixed price contracts or, or uh, higher price contracts. Those are coming off. So there were a lot of reasons to suggest that that uranium price would recover, uh, and and that's really the, the play we've created for investors. I think if you if you look at a typical cycle, at the bottom of the cycle, you know what what we offer is is less risky sort of one to one uh, leverage on yeah. the uranium price. I think once the cycle gets established, people become more confident. You know maybe you want two or three time or four times leverage, yeah. and then you've got to look at project companies or or you know. Um, sure development company. So I think we just, we, we, we fill a different niche in, in, in the space and in the cycle. Definitely. It's, it's, near, it's near to, well, obviously heard of it, mm. but I've not actually been exposed to it. So it's uh, kind of interesting to hear some of the things that you've had to think about in terms of the macro mm. and obviously how you've had to physically go about structuring this thing. So how do you grow? So the, the, the way we've grown and, and the key to, to our growth. Do you, I mean, do you need to? I mean, is that a key driver for you as a bit as an operation? Do you think that's what, wake, what you wake up well, thinking I, about? I think um, if we can grow uh, by issuing stock at a premium to our net asset value, yeah. and buying uranium, yeah. then then that um, then then that then that should be attractive for our shareholders. So right. you're getting more pounds per, per share, um, and and equally, if we're trading at a you know persistent discount, we should liquidate some uranium and buy back the stock. Sure. 
But uh, I think uh, there's another dimension to, to growth in that, you know, I think you do need to be a certain size. Mm. Uh, we, we've suffered recently, and I think it's, you know, maybe more of a factor of the equity markets, but we've seen the liquidity in our, in our stock uh, fall. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you're bigger, you've got more liquidity. Mm. Uh, you know, if we were, say, a $500 million company, I think we'd get, uh, it, it would be of interest to, to d potentially different set of investors, yeah. bigger liquidity. So it, it's not a case of, of, of size for size sake. It's a case of effectively purchasing uranium. Right. And I think you know once you get to a certain threshold, then then, then size is, is helpful. So what's, what's holding you back? The what's holding us back at the moment is is where we're trading relative to our net asset value. You know we, we're currently about a 15% discount to net net asset value, which is right. extremely frustrating. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand that given, you know, how transparent our, um, our net asset value is. But it, it, it's interesting, we just this morning <coughs> ran a chart of, of our share price versus the, uh, you know, the, the sterling dollar FX rate. And, it, mm. and, it's, and when sterling falls, our, pre, our, our, our discount widens. Yeah. And then when sterling comes back, yeah. our discount narrows. So it almost seems that investors are not looking through uh, intuitive in a way. Yeah, yeah, through to the dollar nature of the asset. But yeah. I guess on, on the flip side, given what's what's happening, uh, you know, all the uncertainty in the world, who knows what the right price for the pound is? Is it 120 or is it 130 or so I think those things have impacted on on our discount in net asset value. Um, when we IPO we, we you know we, we traded at a premium. Back end of last year the equity markets uh, had a had a wobble. We traded a discount. We came back in March, April. We were at a premium. We we raised some more money, uh, and now you know with, with the you know, you've got the trade wars, you've got the um, sure. Iran issue, uh, Brexit. And, but do, and but do those things discount. affect the uranium? Do you think those things are going to affect uranium price or your ability to transact? Well, they haven't affected the uranium price significantly. I mean, uranium yeah. price has gone sideways for... for it's got a whole for, different set of controls, hasn't but, it? But I get, you know, the frustrating part is I guess we trade in, in pounds. Yeah. So, so, you know, unless you're looking at the currency every day and, and having a judgment call around the currency, the right yeah. value of the currency, our premium to discount to, to NAV is, is driven... I get it, but, it, but it, there's also, so there's, and I'm sure you've done all the maths, but I, I want to understand it, is I better ask the question, what's your view of future price look like for, the, for uranium for the foreseeable future? So, so, you know, spending a lot of time in the commodity markets, I do believe that incentive pricing plays a role. So at some point, mm. uh, people are going to have to, you know, put money into, into new production, yeah. and, and that production has to be uh, profitable. So we, we think that the, um, and I think, you know, it's, it's not just we, there's, there's a, seems to be a view that, that north of $50 mm. is what you need to incentivize new production. Mm. We're sitting at 25. Mm. So, you know, that, that's the underpin for our, but, you know, that's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, is that a three-year view? Is it a five-year view? I, I don't know. But again, you know, in, in commodity markets, you've seen in the past how they can run up very, very quickly. Isn't it important for you to know? Shouldn't you have a view on that? When you're talking to your shareholders, they're asking, they must be asking that question. Well, again, it's back to we've created the instrument for the shareholders to have a view. So, right. you know, if, if I start having a view and trading around a view, uh, my view may differ from my shareholders and I'm undoing what they're trying to do. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we just got to, we've got to create a pure uranium instrument as possible mm -hmm. and then you, the shareholder, can have a view and say, you know, I think it's going to double or I think it's, it's not, you know, and, and right. you will trade our shares based on that view. Right. So okay. if, if I put in place, you know, debt structures or hedges, mm -hmm. I'm undoing that uh, that relationship between share price and uranium. So price. it's complicated. So, but but let, let me again just want to make sure I totally mm -hmm. understand it. So, you as a fund, that's a fund, mm -hmm. have gone and raised some money. There's a cost to that money, mm -hmm. and then you've kind of got you're talking about liquidity issues and volume mm -hmm. issues. That's a different sort of investor, and they've got. Some degree of control over what you know when what they what they they have a view on what they think the price is going yeah. to be right. So that it's important that mm. they do have a view mm. so they work out whether they trade in or trade out. And I understand you don't want to affect yeah. that necessarily. But what's the relationship with the the people who've given you the institutional money which you've originally raised? I mean, what's what's that relationship look like? 
can you sort of, well you know they they're, they're looking for for for, for capital gains when, yeah when, but when so, so therefore the don't you need to have some forward view i think we where we have to have a forward view is at at you know again being a being a commodity, at some point it hits, gets to the top of the commodity cycle. Mm. So I think then, at that point, you say, well, what do you do? You, know, yeah. uh, you, you don't just keep growing if you think the commodity price is going to fall. But I th also think at that point, um, you know, you may, shareholders may have a view, bef they, they anticipate that, mm. that the, or they have a view that the uranium price is going to fall, and, and you probably find more setting pressure on our shares, yeah. therefore that you know, we'll be sitting at a persistent discount to net asset value, and then what we should be doing is, is you know, s selling some uranium, buying back stock. So you sort of, over time, liquidate the vehicle. You do that, but are there other ways to mitigate the risk? I mean, it, it's a physical commodity ETF. Mm. Um, there must be other commodities which are at various different points in the cycle, mm -hmm. which you might take a view on. Is that anything you'd ever consider? Or would you just know uranium and we'll stick to it? Well, I, you know, I, I've, I've been in, involved in, in, in a lot of co commodities and you know, in, my, in my personal capacity, follow you know, copper, uh, mm. fertilizers, iron ore, those sorts right. of things. Um, but there, as, as an individual, you know, it's, it's easier for you to, to invest. You, know, you can you invest in the physical or you can invest in the equities. Sure. Um, so here we've just created a, a vehicle to, to invest in, in the physical. But that's physical uranium. That's yeah. what you sold to your original funders of, of, of Correct. your project, right? So they're bought into the thesis around uranium. What I'm asking is, at some point, do you gain enough credibility so they buy into the thesis of the business model which you guys have created, which may not necessarily be uranium only? Yeah, you, you could, uh, I guess, the, the technology and the platform could be translated in, into other commodities. But yeah. I think the, the unique thing about uranium is, is the regulatory side around it. I suppose the point I'm getting to is, like, how do you guys grow when you're restricted and constra constrained by everything that uranium does for you in terms of the, yeah. ma the macro so, so and our, pricing? So our, our mandate and strategy is in uranium. That's that we're that's going to stick, so stick to the We're going to stick to that. Okay. If we ever have to do something else, mm. it it would have to be in a different different vehicle. I mean, what we what we've sold to the investors this this is a pure play uranium play. Mm. Uh, and I think if, if we went out tomorrow and, and added copper, yeah. I think we'd you know that that's not what we sold to our, our shareholders. Right. So go forward a couple of years. Uranium's at sixty bucks. It flatlines for ten years. Mm -hmm. What's it do for your business? Well, I think um, the shareholders will, 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 will tell you in the sure. sense you'll, you'll see what, what happens in share price. What do you think that price. would look like? Um, you know, the, the op what, are we, what options do we have? Um, because the material we have is physically consumed in the nuclear fuel cycle, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it, it doesn't have other uses. So there is an end use for it. Um, we could sell our uranium into long-term contracts with utilities who sure. will use it in their fuel cycle. Yeah. Um, but if there's no volatility in the price, that's not good for you, is it? It's not good for shareholders. I think shareholders like, like volatility. What, because shareholders, not good for them, not good for you. Yeah. So what do you do? I think the board would have to have a, have a look and say, you know, what is the what is the best uh, value opportunity for for sh for shareholders? Should we liquidate the vehicle and give the money back to shareholders? Right. Say, you know, we'll sell the uranium. You, you won't go and sell it on the spot market because it'll impact the spot price. Right. But in some form, you'll sell the uranium and say to shareholders, you know, you've had your fun. Here's the cash. Yeah, here's no, your, I, here's I, your I, money I get, back. I get that, but you know, it, just, it seems to me if, if the the market's in control, not not you. And I'm just wondering, you've, you're building up a whole series of skills and knowledge around this mm -hmm. physical commodity ETF. And I just wondered how you take those skills, whatever they are, and you know, create more value down the line, either, either in another vehicle, mm -hmm. or as part of the group, or, or separate. Uh, you know, what, what, what's the future look like? Yeah, I, I don't think we've, 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 we've come to that right. uh, yet. I think we still think that in uranium, you've got your got some way to go. You know, if I talked about the $50 incentive price and we we're at 25, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm not worrying now and tomorrow about, you know, what's the next uh, big thing for us. You know, right. we've been very clear 
uh, in terms of our marketing and, and the setup in, in our perspectives as to what this vehicle looks like. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I don't think we're going to deviate from that. We, we did say that we would uh, consider royalties and, and right. streams. Right. Uh, so that is an addition we can do to the vehicle. I think it, it will never be core business because you know, I don't want to incentivize new production. So, you yeah. know, our strategy is about sequestering uranium yeah. and, and adding to supply side discipline. I don't want to be funding new greenfield projects. But if they're midlife or end of life um, streams of royalties, yeah. that could give us physical. Yeah. That, that's an interesting okay, so opportunity. Okay, we, we're starting to get, get to it. Because the reason I'm asking this question, I'm pushing mm. this point, is because I've had a number of interviews over the past few months, mm. but specifically over the past two, few days, where people are talking about price being controlled. You know, you've got the three big players in the market potentially capable and probably needing to control the price. We're not going to say those big you know, spikes of the last cycle. They're going to, mm. you know, control it so it stops too many new entrants coming in and gives them enough mm. of a margin mm. to be able to continue to control the market for a while. So in that scenario, hence, mm. you know, the suggestion has been the price could sit around 60 bucks for a long time. So what does that do for you? Yeah, I've, I've yet to see a commodity market where, um, you know, a consortium of producers can control. Firstly, it's anti-competitive. Um, sure. You know, so so uh, the, 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 the problem with, with mining is the lead time. So from expiration to production yeah. could be 10 years. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, let's push some more now. You know, it's, yeah. it's very hard to anticipate where um, so the demand's going to be in five years' time. So mm -hmm. the leads, leads and lags on, 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 on projects and development and capital and permitting I just can't see how people can hold a price within a in, in a in a narrow window. I mean, mm. you know, you look at nickel, how it's flown up in the in the last short while. Yeah, um, that, that's what commodities do. You know, uh, right. So y there could be a, a, a mind flood. There could be you know a, 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 a regulatory issue. You know, yeah. in nickel, you've seen you know, a government take some measures and, you, and yeah. see what it does to the price. Those yeah. are things outside of the control. Of, of, of a handful of companies. Right. So I, I, you know, I just don't think that you can get, uh, a, 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 you know, to manage a price with, within a tight band. Right, right, okay. Uh, what are you looking to try and achieve over the, over the next year? You've talked about liquidity, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a case of more awareness, people understanding what you yep, do yep. And, and, and coming into the stock, right? So what are you doing about that? Let's start with that. So, you know, investor relations 101, marketing. Right, okay. You know, we're doing things like, like this, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, going out, seeing retail <coughs> platforms. Uh, we were in Europe last uh, three weeks ago. Talking yeah. to who? Talking to, uh, you know, the smaller investors there. Right, uh, okay. private, Re you're private, focused on retail, are you? Uh, thing, private right? client brokers, right. uh, smaller institutional, yeah. you know, the, 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 the sort of grouping that, that wouldn't necessarily be covered by our brokers. Mm. Uh, you know, there's, there's interest, uh, surprising interest in, in Australia. Um, in, in, in North America, just just trying to cap, you know, I think the, 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 the retail, we didn't do a retail offering mm. and, and it's difficult for retail, say in the US, to, to access us. So th there is an opportunity to, to build out the retail register and, mm. and it has built out, you know, surprisingly uh, well without, with very little effort. Yeah. So, you know, th that's an area we can do. The smaller institutional is an area we can right. do. We've done very little, you know, we've done one trip to, to Europe. So I think there's more we can do in Europe, and, okay. and, and Europe, you know, understands um, uh, nuclear. There's more we can do in Asia. Uh, okay. So it's it's you know when we did the the the, the offer, we had uh, we targeted London institutions, we did New York and Boston, so three yeah. cities. Yeah. That was it. Okay. Uh, to to raise. The and how people happy? I oh, sorry, are you AIM or LSE? We're AIM. You're AIM. Okay. Aim. And people happy with that exchange? They're not. You haven't got brokers telling you to go and list in uh, Hong Kong or Singapore. Or well, we, we've New got, York. We've got brokers <laughs> suggesting North America because again, you know, they're they're they're, they're peers. There, there's the the North Americans understand yeah. uh, uranium. So we are getting. Pr proposals and propositions. There's a to cost to that. There's a cost to that, and 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 you know I spent 15 years at BH for Billiton. Uh, I don't want to see another DLC, <laughs> but uh, you know secondary listings have a cost to it, and 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 the you know the the analysis we have to do is what's the cost and what's the benefit. And what's the what are you looking for? I mean, you know, when you when you it's not just about liquidity. You say I'm going to go out there because I'm hoping to get X amount of more dollars of volume, sorry pounds, mm. trading here. Um, what do you think these markets are going to do for you? Going to US, 
Hong Kong, et cetera? It's a deeper pool of investors. Right. You know, it, it, it's, it's tapping into more folk who understand uranium specifically. Right. Uh, you know, if you look at our register, we, we've got a good spread of, of strategics, of institutionals. Yeah. Even with institutionals, we've got generalists and we've got right. uh, uh, specialists yeah. uh, in, in the resource space. So it's, it's just, you know, just tapping into okay. more different uh, pockets of capital. And uh, the one thing I haven't really touched on is in terms of setting up this vehicle and the, the relationship we have with Kaz Adam Prom as, mm. a, as a supplier. Mm. You know, to have a vehicle like this, the key thing is access to, to material. Mm. If we had uh, raised the $200 million last year and then had to go into the spot market yeah. to buy what was 6% of world production in the spot market, who knows where mm. the spot price would have been. Yeah. You know, through the, the relationship with Kazadam Prom, we were able to fix the price yeah. outside of, of, of you know, yeah. visibility, then come to market and say, we're raising $200 million, we have purchased you know, $8 mm. million, and this is the price. Mm. So what happened then is we saw the price rise on, on the back of, of, of that announcement. So having that relationship, that is very important for us, to be able to go uh, set a price and a volume, go to the market yeah. and raise the money. But see, you, you bought all you bought all you own at the moment. Are you buying any more? Are you going to raise any more money to, to buy we, more? We, we'd, lo we'd love to. You know, we, 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 as I say, you know, we think the uranium price has still got a way to go. Okay. We'd love to raise more money to but buy more uranium, your nav, but yeah. my nav okay. holds but, me back. But like I said, that's better yeah. sort of coming to an outside. So I did start yeah. the conversation. You must have done some numbers around that and go if if you and which is why I asked you about your forward view on price because if you do have a forward view on price, the maths get quite simple. If you think the price is going to minimum fifty in the next twelve months, your your nav at the moment is inconsequential, isn't it? It is and it isn't. So if you mm. think that that you know back to this creating the physical ETF, mm. if for simplicity, you know one share equals one pound of uranium. Mm. If I then issue uh, my shares and buy half a pound of uranium, you've got mm. two shares worth one and a half pounds. Mm. That's, that's the issue about the, the NAV. So if we can, every time we issue a share, we buy one pound or more than one pound of uranium, we're creating value for, for shareholders. If every time we issue a share, we're buying less than a pound of uranium, we're destroying value for shareholders. Yeah, but if, you, if you're buying 90, if it's 95%, it's 5% discount. I mean, I don't know what the NAV is today, mm. but what, what sort of... Well, at the moment, we're at a 15% discount in that. That's material. Well, there's a point. I'm saying, have you done yeah. the math to work out what, you know, what is material? If it gets to 10% you know, discount, is your view on the future mean that this 10% right well, now doesn't the, matter? Well, I think a strong message I have received from shareholders, uh, particularly after our, our last issue, is that yeah. you know, they, they don't like seeing uh, shares issued at a discount in NAV. You know, maybe there's a tolerance. Maybe it's two, three percent. Two, three percent. But, but okay. I, 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 you know, I think if, if, if you know, anything more than that, uh, there would That's not be happy. That's what it's going to be. It's two, three percent is the number you're going with. But, okay. but, but you know, I, I think, you know, that you, you've got costs in an issue anyway. So you need to be at a premium yeah. at NAV just to cover the costs of an issue. For fund one, can you raise a second fund? Well, it's not a fund in that it's not closed so in. You know, we, we can just yeah. we can just keep adding. We right. don't we don't need to do a second vehicle. Um, you know, if if you wanted to do a second vehicle, maybe you can put more leverage. You know, you can create a different type of structure with different risk reward. But that's what I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you know what the controls are. You know, how much control you have versus you know your current shareholders, right? You know, they're, they're driving some of your, your decision making as opposed to you having a view of what the future looks like and what you want your business well, to be I and where the returns come from. They, they, it's, it's very different from equities. So different. Yeah, I mean, it, it is because you're buying a physical commodity yeah. class. And, you know, that's, no, I, that's I, mean, a way I, to look I understand at it. that, but I'm talking about your interaction with shareholders mm. is mm. very different. Yeah, because I, I, I don't have a project pipeline where I say I'm going to spend so many dollars on yeah, exploration very and then I'm going yeah. to develop a mine and I may deliver, deliver it on budget or right. over budget or on time or yeah. you know, over time uh, and, and that creates value. Yeah. No, I mean, we are, it's very, very simple. Right. And have you had any difficulty explaining this to the marketplace? Have you had any issues with people getting 
what it is that you're trying to do? No, no, uh, no. I, I think, you know, even from day one, we did some uh, beginning of last year, uh, sort of six months before we came to market, we did some ex exploratory, right. uh, you know, road testing of, of, right. of the idea, the concept. Yeah. And I was surprised how many people, A, understood uh, uranium, right. B, how many people had lived through through the bad times. Yeah. But no, it was a very, very simple structure to to explain. In, in fact, you know, in, embarrassingly simple. Right. Yeah, people people got it. Yeah, yeah, okay. But until until you kind of recover from where you are now, the price are you the price recovers from where it is now. You've kind of got limited options. That's what's what's what I'm well, hearing. Not you know, we, we, our our options are all around the ability to add more pounds cost effectively. That that's the option we have. Yeah, but cost effective. That's the key yeah. word here. So, so, so it, it is limited. So it's limited by market conditions and our in our net asset value. You know, if we if we had this conversation in in, in March April, it would have been easier because we were trading in the premium. Right. Um, but, but what are the things controlling that? You know, what, what, what's going to see a recovery in that? You know, when are you going to get back to zero, as it were, as opposed to? Well, I, I do think the currency has got a big impact, and and you know, as I say, we've we've tracked currency versus versus NAV discount, and it it's you know, there's you know, it looks like a very strong correlation. Right. Um, and and so you know, if, if we if if the pound is back at one thirty one thirty five. You know, I'll, 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 we'll be back at uh, at NAV at the same sh at the same uranium price. So, are you saying this whole uncertainty around Brexit? Yeah, I think is a big is a big problem for you. Uh, yeah, and what needs to happen on that front? You just just clarity, make a decision, any decision, then market gets yeah, some. Uh, yeah, I mean, back people back. have to get confident around a level for sterling. You know, yeah, is that one twenty? Is it one thirty? Is it one forty? Uh, once people. You know, once the market gets confidence that that's the right number, then I think, you know, our, our NAV uh, discount will. So, but if no deal happens, what's that do for you? I don't think we have to think about because if no deal happens, there's certainty. So the sterling will have a price. If a but deal happens, there's certainty it will have a different price. Right. So but I'm not trying to pick the price of sterling. All yeah. I want. Is is some clarity and certainty yeah. that the market says, okay, now we know how to price the pound. Exactly, but again, it's another factor which you can't control. Like lots right. of factors yeah. in, in, yeah. in this space, you can't control. Yeah. We haven't even spoken about two thirty two and, and the work. Well, group. I don't want to because we've covered it so much with so many people. <laughs> That's another uncertainty. You know, those are two thirty two is you know been and gone. Mm. Working group. We'll see what happens in October. Mm. Another one of these WNA type yeah. events in Nashville. Brexit at some point. Brexit will, will some run point its course. May, it will run its course positively or negatively. But Correct. I guess that my frustration in in the way that I'm interpreting this is the fact that you're 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 saying you're frozen as much as the market is frozen because your mm -hmm. nav isn't working for you. There's no solution that you've got. Like you know, with equities, you go. I've, we've got a uh, development over here which we think we've done a few things to and I think mm. the upside is this, we're off and running. You're fixed on price, the, pr the price in the market is the price mm. in the market and that's what your shares are, are pegged to. It's influenced by yeah. lots of factors like currency, like some of these decisions mm. that utilities mm. are trying but to I, make. I so. think other players in the market are, are impacted by the same things. If you've, if you've got a development project in uranium today, yeah. uh, you're held back by those same things. It's, yeah. it's market certainty. You know, if, if, if market certainty comes back, yeah. uh, you know, people will, will, will want to fund projects. And, uh, but the, yeah, but the other component that you've got is the potential, the, the, price, the pricing is also a cap at some point. It's not going back to 140 bucks, right? If it did, happy days for we'll close to it, it cash it. in. <laughs> we'll, yeah, yeah, you know, you great. Just, but you know, if it gets, if it hits, since it hits 50 or 60, mm -hmm. people are going to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. Is going to affect you, and yeah. you've got some decisions yeah. to make too. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's just. But you're waiting. You know, it's a waiting game, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know. It, so why should it share? Why should investors come in now? Why, what's going to drive liquidity? Because, because I, I think you think it's that arbitrage. Back back to the uh, you know back to the my point about the early part of the cycle. If you invest in yellow cake, we're not going to go bust. Yeah. You know those physical barrels of uranium Got it. have a market value every day. Got it. If you're a development so, project um, or an exploration yeah, play, all that overhead. You, no you could, certainty, you know, right, you, okay, you get it. You could. Uh, yeah. But at some point, your exploration play or your development project. Will have 
you know, four times leverage to the price, where I'm yeah. one times leverage. So at that point, you, you may find people say, well, you know, you've been good in my portfolio, but yeah. thanks, um, you know, I'm chasing but, some but it comes back to my, exciting guys. It comes back to my question of earlier. You've got to have a forward view on price as to what the timing is around mm -hmm. that one, because my upcharge here is that if I think it's 12 months away for anything moves, any price discovery, mm -hmm. I'm going to go invest <coughs> a nickel for a year, and then I maybe maybe come back to a uranium yep. story, right? So you trotting around Europe or the world or whatever. So you're absolutely correct. So so what why is, bother? And that's it. You know, people say, well, you know, I could come back in a year's time and, and nothing would have happened. Because I if I have the view that it's 12 months away, right? But yeah. if I have the view it's three months away, different story. Absolutely. And so, and, and and you know. That's what people are trying to understand. What are the triggers for, for the timing? Mm. You know, was it 232? Is it now the working group? Because you know, Brexit aside, because that, you know, that, that, that's a currency issue, what are the triggers for the utilities to come back and sign long-term contracts? What is the trigger? Because that, you, know, you see what, what's happened to spot volumes in, in, in the spot yeah, market, sure. they've dried up. Sure. And so I think it's looking at those triggers and saying, well, you know, what will trigger? So, you know, we focus a lot on the currency and on Brexit and, yeah. and, and on, on NAB discount, but you know, the underlying fundamentals of the uranium price is, I think, what will drive people to say the timing's three months, 12 months, or three years. But so, so I'll ask again, you, you must have a view, a forward view on that one. You must say, right, this event or these events or, or this timeline is when things will start to make. Because if you're trotting around the world, mm -hmm. talking to investors. I, I do have, you know, I, I do have a view. You know, we do okay. think that, um, you know, we'll wait and see what the working group comes up with. We th we feel, you know, and, and a lot of people you talk to say it, it, it yeah. should be fairly market neutral. Yeah. Uh, and, and people won't have an excuse not to contract. And once the contracting starts, you know, people start to sense, okay, now there's some sense of return of normality in the uranium market. But, it, but it'll be, it's, a, it's, it's a slow growth, it's a hockey stick. I mean, what, what are you thinking? I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't you, you don't plan for hockey sticks. No. I think you, you, know, you, 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 you plan and model you know, normal markets, but, but what happens in, in, in commodity markets, it doesn't work that way. Mm. You, know, you get hockey sticks up and down. That's just the nature of commodity So you're standing markets. in front of these rooms of people going, when it turns, it's going to be great. I can't tell you if it's three months, 12 months, yeah. 18 months. Yeah. You make that call, but we're quite a good bet for when it does turn. Correct, because you're not, you know, you're not going to lose your money. You're not going to lose your money, but there's other things you could do with it in the meantime. There is, right? So I think there is. That that's the yeah. debate, and you're and not advising. people I'm not on advising that. people to bet on copper versus nickel or nickel versus uranium. I'm right. just saying, if you like uranium, yeah, and you believe in the uranium story, here's a very clean, pure way to play uranium. That's that's what I'm. Probably but you're saying either now or at some point in the future, yeah. it's a it's a good uh, clean uh, yeah. bet. So, okay. so we we think there's a you know it's a three to six month. Yeah. Uh, when you start seeing things happen, uh, not, Great. A, not a three to five year. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Get <laughs> 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 it get it out of you. That's okay. Yeah. So if, if that if that's the if that's the case, I yeah. um, I, I understand what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. I better understand what you're trying to do. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming in. I, I love these sorts of stories and I'm interested to see see how this pans out and develops and you know Let's hope Brexit goes away <laughs> for lots of reasons. And um, we get some price discovery to be able to see what you can do. Yep. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus, most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.